You're watching The Adrian Bauer Project. Hello, 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 hello. Many, many thanks for choosing to click on my thumbnail and to watch my content. Very much appreciated as always. And before we begin, I'd like to say an absolutely massive, massive thank you to all of you out there who have subscribed. We finally broke the 600 barrier. I think at the time of recording, we're on uh, 601. And I can't thank you enough. And I hope you're all enjoying the content I put out. I know my content is varied that's how i like to do it um i'm not a channel that will just stick to one uh topic all the time uh and i hope you quite enjoy that way of how i do things so uh again many many thanks to you all um you know none of these subscriptions have been bought which i know does happen on youtube and i know youtube have been trying to uh stamp that out but all my 601 as far as i know are genuine there's no bots on there as far as i know so thank you all okay so let's get back on to the video and we're on vlog number three of our airfix motorhead bomber build yeah it's the uh, hankel he 111 h6 uh, version of the hankel that they're using to base it all on so uh, just recap uh, if you watch my haven't seen my first video what we are trying to do is build this kit as accurate as we can uh, for our uh, is on Joe Protegno's uh, illustration um, in the first video we pointed out uh, where the differences are going to be and so we're taking it from there so number three i'm going to show you uh, how far we've got so i just want to crack, uh, get my glasses on because i can't see without it now i know in uh, vlog number two i said i'll probably be showing you what i do with the figures but i've just got that involved with this build i haven't done them yet so that will definitely be the next video but here we go so I'll just try and bring this in and show you the best I can. What I must say is what a fantastic kit this is. I really, really like this kit. It's going together like a dream. Um, I know in previous builds I've done, they've been Revel kits. And we know Revel are very hit and miss. And the few kits that I've been doing just lately have seemed to be put me off a bit it was the war spike build which i found boring but that was a really really old kit we're talking 60s 70s with that kit so you get what you pay for with that but this one um let me tell you this if your modeling mojo is flagging because you bought kits and these kits aren't very good buy this one this kit is awesome uh dare i say almost like to me alike but not quite because you do still have to do uh, a little bit of work on here and i'm going to tell you where uh, right so first off let me get the instructions and uh show you what we did um we've not put the wheelbase together yet now they went together easily enough all i have to tell you is get rid of your nubs <laughs> if there's one rule in modeling plastic kit modeling that everybody has to stick to get rid of your numbers which are the little bits of plastic left on the part after you've took it off the sprue because there are some um, parts where that little knob is going to stop the part fitting properly so get your little sanding stick and get it smoothed down get rid of your numbers but they all went together fairly easily i, th I thought the put putting them in was a little bit of a faff I thought it was going to go slotting really easily but it does there's a little bit of movement there and you have to be careful where you put it um, make sure you dry fit so you know exactly where the positioning is because I think you can have it a little too far forward or a little too far back just make sure you dry fit so you know exactly where it's got to be and then glue it 
uh, just a little uh, side note on that. So after that, uh, I put the, the uh, wings together. They were fitted like a dream. Um, put them uh, the top wings onto the uh, the wing root there. Uh, there was a little bit a bit of a gap there, but there's nothing that you know you can't just sand over. Uh, what I do, I glue the, the wings on, let it dry, then I come back with some tomato extra thin, put a, a bead of glue down the inside of that thin uh, line there, and then immediately go over it uh, with a emery board, you know, some fine sanding. And what it does, all the powder you're creating seems to fill the gap. See how I get on with that with the painting, see if that's worked. But it's just a little tip that I found. So if you've got a hairline, a gap that's just shown a little bit too much uh, like the Bombay doors were that's all I've done there just a bead of you know tomato extra thin down then a bit of sanding over the top and the powder that's created seems to fill the gap so there we go so that was all right and then um, I put the tail planes on now don't do what I did I put the wheel in first before I put the tail uh, stabilizers in. And then as soon as I'd done that, I had to sort of lever the back wheel out because uh, these go in and then there's a little square on the tab of one of these uh, stabilizers that that fits into. And I sort of got ahead of myself. So bear that in mind if you're doing this kit. Stabilizers in first, then your tail wheel. That they, again, they went in fantastic, and if you do it right, then your ailerons on there go up and down, which is lovely. Um, this little bit there, I thought was a bit of a faff. Now, what I was, I would have sooner had was two parts of this that mirror each other, so you can just glue that half in there, that half, half in on the other side. But it isn't. Uh, the one on that side, you have to pass uh, the rod through a hole in the middle and then you glue that onto the rod, which made it a bit too fiddly. I think that's a bit of a bad design there for, this, for me. I thought it made it too fiddly. And like I said, what I'd, I'd as soon as just had uh, the parts looking like that and just putting them in uh, to the appropriate holes it made it a lot easier. But that's just one thing you have to look out for. Uh, next up, the engine nacelles. Uh, they all fitted together fairly easily. Again, get rid of your nubs because there are parts that need to be flush and you're going to get a nub there. It's going to stop it going together properly. However, you do have to spend a little bit of time getting your engine nacelles into position properly onto the wings. Um, I thought this was just going to be slot on and done but no uh, again there is a lot of uh, leeway and you're gonna have to just wiggle them about a bit because you think you've got that a bit in the top bit in all right but then you've got a gap at the bottom so you, you sort that out and then you've got a, 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 a gap on the top bit of a, a bit of a faff but spend a little bit of time on it make sure they're in properly make sure that up snug onto the wing and you haven't got your engine too high on there because it needs to be flush there and make sure it's not too low. You know, just spend a little bit of time dry fitting again. Now, as soon as you've got the dry fit there, uh, then you know you can get in there with the extra thin because the extra thin works by capillary motion. So you don't have to take it out and, and glue it in. So just watch out for that. Again, probably a little more of a gap there than I would have liked. So I did the, the same thing where I put the nacelle on, let it all dry, then I came back, a little bit of extra thin, sanded over, that's had to fill the holes in because they do need the panel lines there. It's not smooth. There should be panel lines there because these here are inspection covers for the engines. So don't try, you know, wiping all those out because they, they are supposed to be there uh, for the, uh, panel lines so there we go um, so after that um, I fitted on the ailerons now because I'm having this in flight mode and as you can see on the diagram it's banking to the right now 
the ailerons on this kit, you've got them so that you can move them on the tail, but you have to glue them into position on the wings. And I would have thought that you'd have been able to put them onto the wings and move them so you can position them anywhere you like. So if you change your mind on you know, where you want the ailerons positioning, you could do so, but no, you have to glue them in to the position that you want them. So banking right, I thought, what's the position for the ailerons on the position, you know, for banking right, I didn't know. So I, I Googled it and, you know, went on there. So there's a little hint here, there's a rule of thumb. Uh, this is where thumbs come in, a rule of thumb, get it? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you now, if you're not sure, if you're not sure like me, your positioning of your ailerons for having a, a, your aircraft in flight, you want to you know, try and get it pretty accurate as though it is turning right or left or going up or down. This is what you do. So like I say, I'm not a pilot. I don't know. But if there are any pilots out there that can tell me if I'm getting this right, if I'm getting it wrong, let me know. So Bruce Dickinson, are you watching? No. Ah, there you go. He's not watching. So here we go anyway. So rule of thumb. So you've got your ailerons flat, you know, they're just straight across like, oh, like that in normal flight mode, you're flying along straight. So you want to go to the right. So if you're looking for your plane to bank right, put your right thumb up and your left thumb down. So now you know the right wing ailerons should be up position and the left in the down position, which is what I've got there. I'm not sure if I'm catching it very well because of the glare from the light outside. So that's how I've got mine. Look, that's the left wing down and that's the right wing up. So there we go. That's if you're banking right. Of course, if you're going to be banking left, you're going to be going left. So it's your left hand. So your right is down. So that's how you are aileron position is, left is up, right's down. If you're going to be going up, both are going to be up. And if you're going to be going and doing a nose dive or going down, both down like that. Bit of an easy way of remembering, I suppose. Don't know how correct I am. Uh, don't go out and try to nick a small aircraft from your local airfield and try that out because <laughs> I don't know. But I say, that's how I'm, I'm doing it. So that's what I'm sticking with. Whether the uh, angles are right, because they do give you angles on here uh, when you're fitting your ailerons on. Uh, where are we going? So the inside ones have got movement of 64 degrees. Uh, the one on the outside is 20 degrees on, on the up and 25 degrees on the down, but I'm not going to go that technical into it at all. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, I popped in the uh, machine gun uh, fitting just there. Now, I'm still up in the air whether to use the kit version for the cover or use the one that Airfix sent me on the ball turret. That being because if you just take a look at, where are we? Oh. There we go. I'm not sure if you're going to see it, but on top of this diagram there, looks like there's two machine guns on that turret. Now, on this proper version, it's just one machine gun and it will be uh, coming out the back there. So I'll see how the uh, ball turret fits on top of there and I'll take that from that one. So finally, going on to the bottom. So as we know, there's some kind of uh, viewing platform gondola there. On the real aircraft, there'll be a machine gun on the front and the, on the back there and a machine gun on the front. So as we look at the diagram again, we can see we haven't got that. That's straight across there. So we've got the machine gun on the back, but no machine gun on the front and no uh, no viewing platform gone or whatever. So what I've done, uh, I've, I've put the part 
in there, but with the middle bit cut out, which was easy enough, you know, got the snippers on it. Um, I, wouldn't, I was thinking of sanding those over to make them smooth, but I think they might, may, may, you know, could do uh, a little bit more interesting uh, when when it gets painted over, you know, you've got a bit of, bit of I don't know what, there'd be some kind of covers or something that I don't know. I know it's not on there, but I'm, I just want to uh, keep the work I'm having to do to a minimum. So when I've got the machine gun in place on the back, uh, I've got to find uh, a cover for the back. I'll get some plastic card to go in and fill the rest of that part in there. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, it should be smooth on the bottom. So that's as far as I've got so far. Again, like I said, this is an awesome kit. If you just want to be doing this kit as the, the Heinkel, just if you want to get the Heinkel H6, just the Luftwaffe version, you're going to love this kit. I think it is fantastic. It's an awesome kit. So uh, that's as far as we've got uh, for vlog number three. So um, vlog number four, I will be doing the figures. And then I will be uh, filling in this and then we'll be having a look at how we're going to put on the bomb release mechanisms there because they're not going to be uh, the right shape. I might have to either fill or, you know, work out how to put them on because they've got to go on the, the uh, wing roots instead of where they're supposed to have been. And we can also have uh, the first look I think to uh, putting the, the turret on uh, because as we can see that is sort of going over onto where the, that's where the glass part is now on the real aircraft that would have been glass on the, the uh, diagram here it's been filled in it's not glass there so we have to have a, a look at that so hopefully that wasn't too gibberish for you. I know I do waffle a bit, sorry about that, but uh, here we go. That's as far as we've got with it there. So many, many thanks for watching. Uh, really love reading your comments as well. We'll get some really kind comments as, as well. I've had some uh, nice hints and tips too. Um, I wish I'd, I'd got the skill to do the motorized, uh, you know, propellers in it, but not that kind of skillful that was modelled before, as I've said before. So I will be uh, looking at some clear this to put on, but that's for another video. So there we go. Vlog number four of our motorhead bomb build. It's actually looking like a high call now. Thank you very much. So here's to seeing you on the next video. Many, many thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and to ring the little notification bell.